The next material I'm going to make are the wood planks for the front of this countertop. And I've decided that I don't like anything that's in the Revit library, so I'm going to make my own. I'm coming up to manage and materials. I'm going to try and find something that's as close to that as possible. So I'm going to start with the wood flooring. I'm going to double click. Remember, if you can't see this um, Autodesk template file, this little button toggles this on and off. So if I double click from the template file, it will appear here in my library. And of course, the first thing I'm going to do is rename it. Timber panels will do for this one. Uh, the surface pattern, if I go back and have a look at my image, I can see that it's a very bad image, um, but I'm going to work on roughly 120 wide. So I'm going to quickly create a surface pattern for that. This is so that it appears correct in my elevation, so my room elevations. So I'm going to choose model hatch because that means it will be to scale. I'm going to do a new model hatch. It's going to be called 120 vertical. The line angle is 90, as you can see happening up here. And the spacing, of course, is 120. OK, OK. I'm going to leave it at grey so it doesn't have a parrot. So I'm just making sure that when I set up my room elevations, that this will look good too. However, what I want to do is make this appearance look perfect. I'm going to pull this out so I can get a better view of the cube. First up, if I look back at my image, I can see that it goes in the different direction. And it's also rougher. And there's a little bit more orange and a little bit more rustic looking. So I'm going to click on this image. And instead of choosing one from the existing library, because as I said before, I've been through everything and I'm not happy with it, I'm going to go off to my own library. The materials, or the maps more precisely, are sitting in this maps folder under the Revit download library. Our Revit download library on S drive. I'm going to go to wood and I'm going to change this to see if I can make that any bigger. No, that's as big as it's going to get. So what I'm going to do is come into Windows Explorer and set this to be extra large icons. So I'm going to find what I want over here and then I'm coming back. Now if I look back I could see that C Defence actually might get the job done. It's a little bit more orange, but I can override that with a tint. So I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. However, I'm just going to pan through and see if there's anything else that I can use. Now you can see from all of these, I've tried to, as I've downloaded mine individually, I've started everything with wood so that everything sits neatly underneath each other. However, every now and again, I get an opportunity to acquire a map, another map library, which is just these, these textures or these images that I'm talking about, and they may or may not be named the way I do, and I haven't got around to renaming them. Right, now down the bottom, I know that there's a little bit more going on. Can you see this wood bear? Again, it looks rougher than the one I've got, and I've got this one as well, but if I Double click on this, it's actually a very high resolution image and I don't mind that. In fact, I'm, I'm thinking I might use this one. Wood Planks Bear 0029. Right, wood Planks Bear. Zero, zero, Alright, now the next thing I need to do is to scale this chap. So I'm going to do some counting and I'm just going to press pause for a minute and then I'm going to adjust this sample size. All right, I just quickly counted up that image back in Windows. I know that it's 39 planks across. As I said, it's a very high resolution image, which means it's going to show up well, but it's not showing up well here. So in my width, I need to say, if I've got 39 planks, and I just said earlier that I thought they were roughly 120 wide each, that means that it's 4,680. Okay, so that means that when I see 
this image that I know that it should be 4,680 wide. That's the whole purpose of scaling this up to make sure that when we see that, that in real life, it's nearly five metres wide. Now, as far as the height, I'm not as, in, uh, I don't care as much about that one. I'm going to make it roughly the same though, uh, maybe a bit less. Right, so that's all I need to do to scale it up. As long as you understand the principle that 39 planks at 120 millimetres wide in real life would be 4,680, then that's scaling. Scaling, making sure that when it maps onto an object, it looks realistic and in proportion. I'm going done. Now, just to add a little bit more interest to this and make it look realistic, Back in the image, we would have noticed that it's not particularly shiny. So I'm going to take the semi-gloss off it and just put an unfinished look on it. But to really finish this off, we're going to need to give it a bump. You can see that the wood that was already with it had a relief pattern. However, that's just going to be a fairly generic one. It's just based on wood grain, which is fine. But I would really like to see where, we've, where each panel meets to actually have a little recess in that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a relief pattern. These are often referred to as bump maps or texture maps. And I'm going to swap it from based on wood grain to custom, which means again, I'm going to go back into my library. And down here, because I've loaded this from a website called textures.com, generally speaking, there will be one bump map that's set up for this one. Here it is. Let's have a look at it. All right, so what you can see is that it's now turned into a black and white image, and that's because when Revit or any other rendering package for that matter, it understands that when it's the case of a bump map, it means that white is high and black is low, and anything between is a is, a, is somewhere in between that. So where I've got these little black lines, it's going to give the illusion of a recess. I need to make sure that my scale is set exactly to the same as what the image is. So 4680. And I think I made that 4000. So I've written all of these down on the side in a notepad. Now let's have a look at what that did to it. Hopefully it's going to give it a bit of texture and if I crank that up you should see a very exaggerated version of what we're doing. I don't want it that much but I just wanted you to understand. Just keep in mind that turning an image simply black and white often isn't enough because in this case you can see that we've got some dark textures and some lighter textures but that doesn't necessarily mean that one is high and one is low. So sometimes we need to go and make that into a proper bump map using Photoshop or there's some free software available on the web. One is called Crazy Bump and it's, Crazy Bump is um, just a free website and it will take your coloured image and help you turn it into an image for, this is for bump. We've also got reflection maps and opacity maps. So I'm going to pull this back down until it looks better. Sorry, I've gone back the other way. Sorry, did you notice that the negative? So let me just... All right, that looks better. Not too far. If I click on this, sometimes I can... If I inverted the image, it would make the white black and the black white. And if I really wanted, I'm not completely delighted this, with this, but it's going to be fine. I could take this into Photoshop or one of the other paint packages and I would up its contrast just to make my blacks really black and my whites more white, which I do sometimes. Linking texture transforms would actually take this image and then apply it to perhaps a reflection if I decided to turn that on. So it would mean that I, anything I adjusted here sample-wise would automatically go through to the other images. I wouldn't need to keep adjusting the same image. And that's all I need. So let's go apply and OK. And that's it for making my materials for the moment.